We're on lesson 7 of chapter 9, which we're going to solve systems with quadratic equations. First, we're going to solve systems by substitution. Then we're going to use a graphing calculator to solve. Then we'll solve a real-world problem. We've worked with systems of equations before, but not with a quadratic equation. And whenever we have systems with quadratic equations, it's usually written with a quadratic equation and a linear equation. You'll notice some of these on the graph over here. And you're going to notice that sometimes there's going to be no solution. This parabola over here has a lowest extent of 0, and then this linear equation passes right underneath it. Once in a while, not quite as often as the other ones, you're going to see that having only one solution, where this parabola and this linear equation meet for a second, then they go off in separate ways. Usually, you're going to see a linear equation having two solutions with the quadratic equation, where it crosses the parabola on one side of the axis of symmetry and then the other side. So let's take a look at some of these. It tells us to solve the system y equals 3x plus 2, and then y equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. And here you notice we're solving these by substitution, our old method. So if y equals this and y equals that, I know that this equals y. So I can plug this in here, 3x plus 2 equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. And here's where I can turn this area into 0. I can subtract 2 from this side. I can also subtract 3x from this side. As I rewrite my equation, I have 0 over here. I have 3x squared plus 3x, and then just 0 here. If I factor out the 3x, I would have 0 equals 3x times x plus 1. So then I can get my answer. My answer could either be 0 here or negative 1. So I have my x values then. So my x value at 0, what would y be? Well, 3 times 0 plus 2 is 2. So my first coordinate point is 0 and 2. And then negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1. So negative 1 and negative 1. So now I have found the two coordinate points where there would be solutions to this system. And remember, you can always plug these in to check your work. Now we're going to use a graphing calculator to solve these. And this is a nice preferred method for people who have these graphing calculators. You can plot both of these into your graphing calculator and look for the parts where it intersects. So I can press y equals and plug in these equations. The first equation is y equals 2x minus 4. Then I can move down to that second equation spot and type in that one, x squared minus 4x plus 1. Then when I'm done, I can hit graph. Now that I have a screenshot of my calculator, I can see that the first intersection is going to be at x at 1 and y at 2. So I can make my point at 1 and 2. I know that solves the system. Looking at the second intersection, I see that my second answer to this system would be at x at 5 and then y at 6. So these would be my two answers to the system using a graphing calculator. We can also use a graphing calculator for this one. We have negative x squared minus 4x plus 2 equaling negative 2x minus 1. I can rewrite this just like this, kind of going backwards with substitution. So I can have y equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 2. I can also plot out y equals negative 2x minus 1. And then I can look for where they are equal to each other with the x and y. You press y equals again to get started. Plug in that first equation, negative x squared minus 4x plus 2. Drop down and enter that second equation then. Negative 2x minus 1. And then press graph when I'm done. Looking at the graph, the first intersection on the left is at negative 3 for x, and then positive 5 for y. As I look at the intersection on the right, I see that it's positive 1 for x on my calculator, and I see that it's negative 3 for y, so 1 and negative 3. 
And now I have answered my system with these two coordinate points. Let's solve a real world problem. It says, during practice you hit a baseball toward the gym, which is 240 feet away. The path of the baseball after it is hit can be modeled by this equation. y equals negative 0.004x squared plus x plus 3. The roof of the gym can be modeled by this equation. y equals 2 thirds x minus 120. Uh, for values of x greater than 240 feet, and less than 320 feet, so it only runs for a certain distance, and that makes sense. The, the roof isn't going to run forever. And then the wall of the gym can be modeled by the equation x equals 240, because it's 240 feet away. So does the ball hit the roof of the gym? So what we can do is we can plot this with our calculator, and we can plot this with our calculator. And as we model the path of the ball, we can see if that's going to be high enough to hit the gym after 240 feet, but before 320 feet. So I can make this my first equation in my calculator, and I can make this the second equation. So I pressed y equals, and now I enter negative 0.004x squared plus x plus 3. Now I can go down to my second equation, and I can enter 2 thirds x minus 120 and then hit graph. And then it gives me a graph of the system. So as we look at a graph that is made from the situation, I can see the ball's path, which is this equation here, and it follows this trajectory. And I see that it does cross with the linear equation of the roof. But does it hit the roof? Remember that the roof does not start until 240. So even though it follows this path, it does not begin until this point. So you would say actually that the ball is not going to be crossing and hitting the roof. Instead, it looks like it's going to be hitting the wall. So since it doesn't quite make it there, I can say that it's no, it's not going to hit the roof. It will be short.